All right guys, John here, and today uh, I thought we'd just take a look at the cheapest possible torque wrench you can buy and see if it's actually act That was snow. And see if it's actually accurate. So, of course, I've had this Craftsman one, 3 8 made in the USA for years. I've used it, and I've always questioned, is it really accurate? So, of course, it is a beam style. And here, basically, once you put a load on, uh, the fastener, you know, the needle moves to your desired torque. So we have this one to test. And then I picked up a brand new one here, uh, OEM Tools one from AutoZone, uh, which runs $14.99. So pretty cheap. Uh, the part number is 79-140. And of course, you can see this is in half inch. Now, one thing that is unique about this, it does have half inch on this side and also the reverse side. You know, of course, that makes it uh, easy depending on where you're trying to torque. So if it's above or below, whereas here, you know, you only have one way of using the torque wrench. Now, this is not a big deal on other torque wrenches, but when we're talking about this beam style, you have no indication of if you're at the actual torque you want without you know, being able to look at the gauge here as you're torquing. And that makes these more complicated to use versus a click style torque wrench. There, you can just put it on there, you know, torque, click, you're done. Here, you've actually got to balance properly. As you can see, the handle pivots. So you want a balanced force on here, consistent and you need to be able to watch that needle so when it comes up to your torque setting. So this one is actually, I believe, yes, this one is actually made in Taiwan. So we'll see how this does. Kind of the same test scenario we did with the split beams. So again, we're going to be using uh, the CDI torque tester which is plus or minus 0.5% in accuracy and is made by Snap-on. So that'll give us some real clear results on if these are actually accurate or not. So we'll go ahead, power her up. Click test. Uh, we're gonna actually choose dial torque wrench instead of the click style. And then audit. Change this because this is a 150 foot pounds max. Hit next. And then we're going to go ahead and test it. So, first off, we want to do 30 foot pounds. Hit next. See where that is there on the scale. We'll do it again. Now, again, if you guys didn't see the other video, the green box is basically plus or minus 4%. So you can see we are just over 4% of our set value, so over 30. We'll do it again. So now it wants us to do it at 90. Same deal. So again, we are we are definitely over. Now we'll do max 150.
So you have it right there. We're definitely uh, over that plus or minus 4% between all of the ranges. I'm gonna go ahead and cycle this torque wrench about a thousand times. We'll run this test again and see how that compares. But first, let's go ahead and also get the Craftsman over here and we'll see how that one compares. So got a special adapter here to go from 3 8 to half to prevent torque loss. And of course this one max is uh, 50 pounds being it is 3 8 Test, dial, quick test. Change this to 50. Next test. So. Yep. So, like I said, these are tricky to use. Uh, it does take practice, but you can definitely see <laughs> this older used uh, Craftsman here is accurate. So, again, I'm going to go cycle these a thousand times. We'll do this again and see if the results are the same. All right, we'll start back with the Craftsman again after a thousand cycles. So there's that, we'll get the OEM tools, one out here. And then one fifty. All right guys, so again, looking at this data here, you can definitely see uh, even after a thousand cycles, uh, the OEM is still over 4%. And if we show that on a graph here, you can see again before and after, you know, it's definitely for the most part over 4%. So you have it guys. So after running those tests, cycling them a thousand times there, uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, the old Craftsman here, made in the USA, was definitely, as you guys seen, within that uh, plus or minus 4% range. 
while the Taiwan OEM tools was just outside of it. So are they accurate enough for the price? You know, I would definitely say they are, even though they're outside that, that plus or minus 4%. If you're doing something that doesn't have to be truly accurate, you could potentially get away with one of these if you're looking for a ballpark torque. Now, would I use this to torque something like head bolts on a motor? Absolutely not. Uh, one, it takes really good technique as you've seen. It's very easy to over torque. Uh, again, you have to support the handle properly here with the center of the force, keeping the handle from touching. And at the same time, you have to watch the indicator, which can be tricky. Now, in the overhead situation, yes, that would be easier versus torquing, you know, like we were doing there on the side. But still, you want to be, you know, you want to be dead facing that needle to make sure you're lining up properly with the desired torque. So overall, yes, I would say uh, they work, uh, but I would strongly recommend finding a good quality click style torque wrench or, you know, even a digital style torque wrench versus these. But again, as you see, they will work in a pinch. So if you need to pick one up and uh, make it work, it'll work. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. We're going to touch base more on budget torque wrenches, uh, hopefully in an upcoming episode. And of course, digital torque wrenches, but just wanted to get this out there. Always was curious on, on if these beam style needle torque wrenches are accurate at all. And yeah, you guys see the results. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll catch you on another one.